Thank you for inviting us to speak about the Connected Healthcare Project, a transnational multi-partner collaboration across two national health systems with differing levels of technical readiness, similar demographics and similar challenges. It is funded by the European Space Agency in collaboration with the UK Space Agency and NHS England as part of the 70th anniversary celebration of the NHS and was developed in response to the challenges faced by both Cornwall and the Scottish Highlands and Islands, remote rural areas in the UK where the digital infrastructure through which to deliver health and care is challenging. Goonhurley Earth Station is the lead partner and the prime for this project. They are supported by Falmouth University, the Southwest Centre of Excellence and the Catapult. Every health partner in Cornwall is involved alongside Cornwall Care, who are a charity and the largest care home provider in Cornwall, in addition to third degree and SME specialising in NLP and AI. In Scotland, the project is supported by the Scottish Government, the Health Board of the Highlands and Islands and Aberdeen and the University of the Highlands and Islands universities. We have a number of different team members talking to you today and available for questions following the presentation. These include Matt and Nigel from Goonhillier Station, myself, Anna, Maddie and Gwyn from Falmouth University and Sally from the third degree. The Connected Healthcare Project is bringing together experts in a number of different fields, including health and social care, care home charity, AI, tech businesses and satellite communications to create a unique partnership to improve infrastructure and network security in response to real world health and care challenges faced by rural populations in the UK. Whilst the individual technologies have been proven, they have not previously been widely integrated for use in the health and care sector. Through this satellite enabled infrastructure, four e-health applications will be delivered across six sites in two countries. The applications will be tested for usability and acceptability. We will focus on the Cornwall activity within the project where we are uncovering the importance of the human element of any technological innovation, especially when bringing sectors together that do not often work together, and importantly, when handing the power in the operations and research to crucial but more marginal members of the communities within a global pandemic. In Cornwall, the focus is on two use cases. The project will offer connectivity in combination with a specific existing third party healthcare software platform to three care homes across the county. And secondly, we'll be developing NLP and AI for unpaid carers with the option to trial the Goonhilly Data Centre for data storage and processing. The research in Cornwall is being driven from both a technological and human participant viewpoint with the care homes taking the lead. They are using the satellite enabled remote video consultation platform and are inviting healthcare professionals across primary and secondary care to multiple disciplinary team meetings and virtual ward rounds in an attempt to test the technology, pilot new ways of working and challenge the health system by taking the lead in the innovation and research. The other element of the Cornwall project is to develop a technological solution for unpaid carers with the third degree, more of which you will hear about later. In the Scottish Highlands, satellite enabled connectivity will, deploy, will be deployed at three GP practices. These will focus on three case studies, mental health, diabetes, in particular podiatry for diabetic patients with foot ulcers and clinical education for medical students delivered via this improved connectivity. The context for the project. Back in 2018, with enduring and unprecedented financial pressures and increasing demand for services, the NHS long term plan advocated a new model of care that offered a digital first option to patients. This option includes the use of digital care records, digital consultations, linked clinical and administrative data sets and decision making support supported by apps, wearable devices, biometric monitoring and digital information. The intention is that the digital citizen will become the digital healthy citizen, more in control of their own health information and decisions, with care delivered closer to their home, working together with health professionals to improve their health and care outcomes. However, the drive for a digital first model of care has always been acknowledged to increase risk of driving geographical and population digital inequality and inequity of access to NHS healthcare provision. Without the fundamental network infrastructure that is accessible and affordable for all, through which to deliver this digital first model of care, significant areas of the UK risk becoming excluded from the new ways of working and models of care. 
arguably inadvertently designing in disadvantage at the outset of transforming the NHS. The issues of digital inequity and access to digital healthcare is explored a little later in this presentation. In terms of a 2021 update, all of the above still applies, but we have now been dealing with the global SARS COVID-2 pandemic the lethality and magnitude of which continues to expose stark and growing inequalities in societies and their access to health and care, both globally and within the UK. It is also now widely accepted that SARS-CoV-2 will become, or is now, endemic. In terms of digitising health provision, the rationale driving this priority was rooted within the complex, interconnected increase in demand, financial pressures and population growth. Long-term conditions are one of the main drivers of cost and activity in the NHS, and in 2018 accounted for about 50% of all GP appointments, 64% of all outpatient appointments, and over 70% of inpatient bed days. This has increased significantly during the pandemic months. Identifying a significantly at-risk individual one year earlier than at presentation, uh, than at present, can radically reduce their chances of developing future ill health. It is estimated that 15 million people in England are living with long term conditions. They are more prevalent in older people, 58% of people over 60 compared to 14% of people under 40 and in, more group, and in more deprived groups. Treatment and care for people with long term conditions is estimated to take up around £7 in every £10 of total health and social care expenditure. In 2021, SARS-CoV-2 has driven a significant digital pivot within the health and care system and the system is keen to optimise progress made during the pandemic and embed digital transformation. In doing so, we need options developed to deal with congestion and network failure and to ensure that we do not proactively increase the digital divide. In terms of the context of the project, in terms of clinical need, there are significant clinical need that this project is actually responding to. This is the data slide, and this is why it is important that we're doing what we're doing. Mental health. One in four adults experiences at least one diagnosable mental health problem in any given year. In Cornwall, this equates to circa 140,000 people at any one time. Mental health problems represent the largest single cause of disability in the UK, and the cost to the national economy is estimated to be 105 billion a year roughly the cost of the entire NHS. The economic cost to Cornwall is estimated to be in the region of one billion per year. What we also know is that the general population's mental health and well-being has been significantly impacted by COVID and is in fact worsening. There are approximately 17,000 people living with diabetes in the Highlands and Islands region. Currently, service users can travel distances of up to 200 miles for specialist services. 17% of hospital admissions are related to diabetes complications with diabetic foot ulceration, 80% of which is preventable, the commonest cause of admission. This accounts for £6 million per year of the health budget in Scotland. The global cost of diabetes is projected to rise from $1.3 trillion in 2015 to $2.2 trillion by 2030. In the UK, one in eight adults, so that's 8.8 .8 million people, are carers and they're saving the UK economy £132 billion per year. Their health, their mental and physical well-being, however, is compromised just because they are carers and therefore they are included in this study. Rurality. Where there are dispersed and sparsely located populations, increasing centralisation of health provision, physical and virtual accessibility issues and limited and expensive public transport, they present significant issues for equality of and access to services and career development for those professionals working in the field. The population density, both sustained and seasonal, is a factor. For example, there are 28 people per kilometre square in northern Scotland compared to 134 people per kilometre square in the rest of Scotland. Cornwall is impacted by significant seasonal variations where the population increases by approximately 5 million people every summer. And in Cornwall, over 30% of service users regularly make round trips of over 50 miles to visit hospital. Rural locations across the UK struggle to recruit and retain health and care workers. This is a complex area to sort out. 
However, support for students to experience rural health and care delivery and professionals to return to work in those regions is negatively impacted by professional and social isolation and the increasing digital divide being experienced in rural areas. Limited connectivity reduces opportunities for dispersed learning and curriculum delivery. Access to social networks and communities of practice, opportunity that is dependent on connectivity, is limited. Around 68,500 people, or 13% of the population of Cornwall, live in the most 20% most deprived communities in England, with all the health equality, inequalities and chronic illnesses associated with deprivation. Some of the most deprived areas in Scotland are found in government defined rural data zones across the north and northwest of Scotland, where the highest access to deprivation also exists. There are a significant number of areas in Cornwall and Scotland with poor physical and virtual connectivity. These correlate with areas of higher deprivation, corresponding health conditions and the recruitment and retention of clinicians continue to be an issue. The deployment and adoption of telehealth in Cornwall and Scotland pre-COVID was suboptimal. And in terms of the digital divide, we do labour that in this, in this project and you will hear more about it later. We have previously mentioned the NHS digital by default approach to delivering healthcare. Back in 2018, when we wrote the funding bid, there was clear evidence that a digital divide was developing and that there was a risk that the NHS digital first policy was adding to digital exclusion. Three elements interconnect within the majority of instances of the digital divide, connectivity, affordability and digital literacy. One thing that is clear in 2021 is that the public health crisis currently gripping the UK and the globe stands to make the impacts of digital exclusion worse for the millions of people affected. Lockdown has certainly served to highlight our reliance on virtual means of staying in touch. Critically, it has also thrown into sharp definition the issue of digital exclusion. Concentrated exclusion can occur due to geographic concentration of disadvantages and multiple and overlapping levels of structural disadvantage. And this has instrumental relevance to how people live their lives in the digital age. Currently, 10% of the UK population remain disconnected from the internet and are therefore excluded from digital health provision. This has occurred despite initiatives and laws to connect underserved populations such as superfast broadband and the universal service objective. Research by Ofcom shows that one in five or 19% of UK households cannot afford connectivity. This issue is disproportionately burdening lower income households and service providers with all of the investment that's gone into the NHS digital infrastructure compared to the social care and social care provider infrastructure, there is quite a significant difference. The relevance of digital technology compared to citizens' needs and level of digital literacy are important variables to consider when designing and implementing digital care, particularly in the care home sector with a primarily non-graduate workforce. Digital skills are increasingly needed to navigate, appraise and share information. This project primarily addresses the connectivity infrastructure challenges with an associated focus on the adaptation, adoption, usability and acceptability of this technology within care homes, primary and secondary care settings. Expansive geographical areas with low population densities are often difficult to connect. They are further away from telephone exchanges, which determine internet quality and consequently supply connectivity to areas with low population densities is often not seen as cost effective. The reliance connectivity providers have upon market forces can lead to profit based discrimination for the rural population that has a real world significant impact on healthcare provision. Roberts and colleagues describe how rural communities are often underserved by broadband providers, with 9.5 million people receiving a reduced, if any, service compared to their urban counterparts. In addition to geography and socioeconomic status, the digital divide also intersects across age, with older populations more susceptible to the digital divide. There is a plausible risk that elderly rural populations may be triple locked into a form of digital inequality that widens health inequalities during a time where ill health is almost inevitable. Within the context of enduring unprecedented demand, financial pressures and a centralised drive to digitise health provision alongside significant clinical need, we have a situation in Cornwall and Scotland that compounds the complexity of the healthcare and wellbeing delivery. These are the dark spots 
across the areas with no connection or services with only minimal or overloaded bandwidth. This lack of connectivity has an impact on the pace, adaptation to and adoption of technology and the digital transformation in health and care. Despite both significant previous investment and planned investment in terrestrial network capability and accessibility, areas that are sparsely populated will continue to have connectivity challenges in the near and medium term. Resilience of the NHS network in terms of data security and data transfer has previously been tested, such as the enforced shutdown following the WannaCry attack in May 2017 and the increasing congestion issues that are now being experienced. In Cornwall, in the spring of 2021, there was an accidental network cable break, someone cut through the pipe, which meant the whole of primary care and NHS 111 was offline for a few hours and everything was rerouted to the emergency department, causing significant congestion and delays in treatment. As you can see from the slide, there are significant areas in Cornwall where the upload and download speeds are suboptimal. Whilst these figures are from 2018 and there has been an HSCN upgrade since then, what is being reported is significant congestion in upgraded areas as well. So this is why we continue to have the challenges of connectivity in Cornwall and Scotland. Hello and welcome to the presentation on Goonhilly's involvement in the CHC programme. Goonhilly is responsible for the overall project management of this project, as well as providing the satellite infrastructure to this programme. Goonhilly is based down on the Lizard Peninsula in Cornwall. The company was originally set up to buy the site from British Telecom and this was achieved in 2014. We operate several satellite services for low earth orbit, geostationary orbit and deep space using antennas ranging from a few metres to over 30 metres in size. It is a very good location for deep space and geostationary communications given the excellent view of the, the horizon we have on the Lizard. For the project, we are required to transparently incorporate several sites in Scotland and Cornwall into our own internal network. This is achieved using a satellite network based on the iDirect Evolution platform, which is an IP-based satellite communication system designed for high quality broadband connectivity. Located at Goonhilly, the hub is at the centre of a star network connecting up to six remote customer terminals three in Cornwall and three in Scotland. The ground station hub antenna GHY38 is a 6.1 metre diameter KU band antenna. The remotes are 96 centimetre antennas in Cornwall sites and the 1.2 metre antennas in Scotland. The system has sufficient connectivity for secure video conferencing on demand with a very high availability throughout the year. It also has the advantage of storing sensitive data from the providers at the Goonhilly's secure data centre. Also located at Goonhilly is a test terminal available to check out system operations and allow software developers to test out new ideas. For the space segment side, we have chosen Telesat's Telstar 12 satellite, which was launched into geostationary orbit in November 2015 and is located at 15 degrees west. The North Sea beam of this spacecraft is of particular interest since it gives excellent coverage throughout the United Kingdom. With both Cornwall and Scotland lying entirely within the maximum downlink power of contour of this beam, this is the main reason for choosing this spacecraft. The satellite is in a stable position so tracking is not required at any of the remote sites. The resulting service has availability of greater than 99.5% which is equivalent to an outage time of just under four and a half hours per year. When this program was kicked off, the company is offering continuous internet connectivity from low Earth orbiting constellations was very much in its infancy. During the project, however, we have seen both SpaceX's Starlink and the UK's OneWeb increasing their services, with a full service offering very soon. This does have the advantage of low latency, which could improve video conferencing capability and maybe a better alternative for the provision of satellite element of the CHC network. However, the security architecture is different to the solution that we presented earlier, as the data is now wholly in a third party network and will be need to be addressed to servicing the NHS needs. 
The study team will, however, investigate the LEO internet solution if there is a scope to do so. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Now I'll hand over to Gwyn Williams, research fellow focusing on unpaid carers, looking at the development of technological support system to unpaid carers utilising satellite technology to access, connect and harness data. So why are we doing the unpaid carers research? In the UK, one in eight adults are carers, saving the UK economy approximately 132 billion per year. The burden faced by carers often leads to experiences of poorer physical and mental health, with their needs often being overlooked in system processes and impacted further by Cornwall's geography and rurality, which present issues of accessibility and equal provision of services. We will be exploring if this mobile technology offers the opportunity to access busy unpaid carers in a convenient method, we will use natural language processing to theme the data and present these findings on a dashboard accessed by satellite connectivity. With almost 7 billion mobile phone subscriptions worldwide, this near ubiquitous ownership of mobile phones lends itself to support and ease of access to caregivers. And this technology offers the carer the benefit of ease of access at home without having to leave their care in role. There is currently little research exploring the adoption and use of such mobile technology to gain the perspectives of informal carers. And we are testing the use of computers using natural language processing, a form of artificial intelligence, to automate the process and enable large amounts of data to be analysed efficiently, while satellite connectivity is hoped to address rural connectivity issues, allowing health and social care professionals to access the dashboard of outcomes. By utilising the natural language processing algorithm in our mobile engagement platform, we can give participants much more freedom to tell us anything they like in feedback. We use natural language processing to categorise the free text against a dedicated code frame and report it in real time, providing a much more granular interpretation of the data for clinicians accessing it than a simple positive, negative, neutral model. So we can allow them to discover greater insights more immediately. Data collected in the study forms the basis of the training set, which used along with the code frame to create the classifier will be used to then analyse new novel data. Afterwards, a period of validation training takes place where categorisation is checked and given positive and negative validation by the trainer to make sure that accuracy of coding is being achieved. Once the algorithm is successfully categorising data, automated ongoing categorisation can begin, allowing large data sets to be quickly processed and made available in real time via the dashboard. Further training and modification of the code frame can take place at any time because of the flexible nature of the system. So if new topics begin to present, these can be added easily in the future. Once the system's trained, free text comments can be automatically categorised and presented as dashboard data that's quickly and easily navigable, so the insights can be made more readily available to healthcare professionals. Heat maps help us to navigate large volumes of data quickly, identifying hit rates against each category in the code frame, and help with drilling down to view the individual comments below. Automated signposting can then be added to provide support and feedback to participants, depending on the codes that IDA has identified. If you are responding to real world need and have a strong transdisciplinary partnership, there are a number of fundings available for you. Horizon 2020, European Space Agency funding applications, Sprint grants, SBRI funding opportunities, small grants through the Southwest Centre of Excellence Satellite Applications Catapult and the UKRI, which is the major research body, which includes Innovate UK. Here are the contact details of key members of staff that you can have a chat with, should you be interested in any future opportunities. Thank you for listening.